So, I left off part two with the Warriors of Virtue as an honorable mention. I will probably give another honorable mention at the end of this video. So we're going to start off with Flash Gordon, because I mentioned Defenders of the Earth, and the Defenders of the Earth are secretly, basically someone combined the world's first comic book heroes from the newspaper serials and made a cartoon. That's neither here or there, but I wanted to mention that because I did mention that, and because Flash Gordon is the leader, Flash Gordon also was a great movie starring Sam Jones, and that's where we begin. Flash Gordon is based on a comic book from a serial from the newspaper, it may still be running today because I think the Phantom may still be running, but they're like, I think only in the weekly series. I'm not really sure because I don't pick up newspaper anymore. But both of them came from newspaper. They were the first heroes before Batman and Superman and all of them. So then there was Mandrake and Lothar, who's also Defenders of the Earth. But Flash Gordon itself, Flash Gordon was initially a polo player, but when it came to the movies, they decided to make him a football player. And... Him, and Dr. Zarkov, and um, Dale Arden, uh, basically Dr. Zarkov kills them, or not kills them, he kidnaps them in the movie and tricks them into going in outer space where they go to the mystical world of Mongo, which is a place in another universe who Ming the Merciless is trying to destroy Earth. And since Mox Van Sito has passed, I'm sure everyone else who's alive could probably still sign back on, including Timothy Dalton, to um, remake it. Because they can use age progression technology. Or they can just hire brand new people and remake the whole damn thing. But definitely got to have Sam Jones have some part in that. And it was a very, very great movie. So the next movie we're going to go to, we're going to The Never Ending Story. There's three of them, but the original was the best. Not to say that Jonathan Brandis in the second and the third was not good. But the first one was always the best one for me. And it's basically this kid, he's being bullied at school. And he goes to the library. And he gets this book. He kind of steals the book. You know, he's supposed to check it out, but he kind of steals the book. It's it's kind of like the, chron the the Chronicles of Narnia, but this was better than the Chronicles of Narnia as far as I'm concerned. But the kid named Sebastian, he finds himself reading this book where he's becoming part of the story, and in the story, he dictates what's going on, but he doesn't know that he's dictating what's going on. And there's an enemy called the Nothing. I can't give you much more. Atreyu is a bad motherfucker. He's the only Native American character in the book. And that's another reason why I loved it. Because when I when this movie came out, I so found out that I was part of Native American. And Native Americans weren't being portrayed properly on TV anyway. But Atreyu held it down. And him and his horse and all their glory. The rock people. And then the little girl who had to get a new name. And by the end of the movie, you'll understand... Why it's called the Never Ending Story. Besides the fact that the book itself that he stole was called the Never Ending Story. And I guess the principle is that every yay so many years, something happens in our world that affects their world, and that one kid gets the book and he has to change the end of the story. So that's worth the Never Ending Story. However, in the second and third movie, Sebastian is back. It's just not the same kid. It's Jonathan Brandis, and he goes on another adventure to save the land of the never ending story because I forgot what they called the damn thing and then it goes on into the third movie does the same damn thing but he gets to go back and visit and it's more like he literally gets to go back and visit or something like that I can't really remember because my mind is like not that sharp anymore but the never ending story is one of the best movies hands down for children if you want your child to see a good child movie I don't think there's any cussing in it I know there's none in the first one at least I don't remember there's any in the first one if there is it's probably something like damn that's not really that bad but you know, there's three movies, and you should check them all out, but I love the first one the best. And salute to Jonathan Brandon, who has passed. Okay, so now we're going into the guy. There's two. And this is not the cartoon, but this is the movie the cartoon is based off. And the first one is the best one, because I'm a Vivian Wu fan, as well as a Mark Hamill fan, and they're both still alive. And they both probably could sign on to remake the damn thing. And I didn't like the second one that much. I liked it, but I didn't like it. The second one was really about the suit being used more fighting fighting military fighting where the first one the origin story was a guy coming into his own you know the guy got the guy over by accident the guy was a karate guy who couldn't fight his way that well out of a white paper but he was okay but he wasn't like an ace so it made it hard for him to do martial arts with the guyver because he thought he was hot shit but he wasn't and eventually he does have something happen and eventually, 
it affects the story, and I don't want to ruin it for you, but he does kind of make it back. And then the second guy, ever, the new guy is playing the first guy, which is why I kind of like, if you're going to make movies, and I know this is like fucked up, but as an actor, I'm going to say this because this is how I feel as an actor. I think that if you're going to make a movie, you should kind of be legitimately, I don't want to say forced, but obligated to sign on for sequels. That way, when your fans are watching it and it's like, okay, we have this guy, he was in the first movie as this guy, and now he's in the second movie as this guy. Because sometimes the new guy comes in and they might be a better actor, but you have to get used to his face, you know. So it's kind of like when Keanu Reeves did The Matrix 1, 2, and 3, and they're talking about 4 now. You kind of want that versus, all right, I do the first guy ever, I don't want to work anymore, I quit, don't make a second guy ever. Or if you're going to make a second guy ever, just remake the first one with a new guy and then make the second one and the third one if it becomes a franchise. And they didn't do that. They got a new guy and he was a good martial artist. He was a great actor. But the story for the second guy ever was kind of fracked up and weird. But it's a good movie. But for me, it's not as good as the first one. Granted, the special effects in the second one was a little bit better because they had a little bit more money. But the first movie was top dog for me. I don't want to give you anything away. Let's just say... Thank you, Mark Hamill. Okay, so we're going to move for that to Labyrinth with Jennifer Connelly. And Jennifer Connelly was beautiful then as she is now. But she was much younger then. I think she might have been like 14. But anyway, her character was definitely between 14 and 16. And she was rocking around with David Bowie. There were rocks that farted. And there were big, giant, hairy monsters. And Jim Hansen was all over the place. But it was a great movie and you guys should check that out there was a little puppet that rode on a chihuahua looking type dog but it was also a dog so it was a dog puppet who was a knight and then there was hoggle you will love hoggle but you would also love that big furry thing that i can't remember his name is and there's a scene at the beginning of the movie where she's walking through the labyrinth and she meets this talking caterpillar this caterpillar could have saved her so much trouble and that's the best I can tell you. I can't give you any more. You have to see the movie Labyrinth. You have to see it. But she's talking with the caterpillar, and he's telling her which way to go. Now, had he told her to go the way that he told her after she passed not to go, the movie would have been a little bit shorter. But that the, the caterpillar, he tells her how to get through the labyrinth, as he says, things here aren't always what they seem. And so, for those who don't know, Labyrinth is a maze. It is like the, the original word for a maze. So if you see it, you'll, you'll thoroughly enjoy it. They should have made a sequel to it, but they never did. I think they, they knew how to, like, end the saga of a movie. That's one of the movies that a sequel would either make it or break it. And I guess they did the, the, the better start of Valor was to not make a sequel. Although I think if they would have brought Jennifer Connelly back, they would have had to have her have a new story. And in the story, she wished the baby away. And that's kind of how that happened. And then the guy gave her yay so much time to get the baby back. All right, So I gave you way too much of the story, but you should still go check it out just for fun. Um, I do have an honorable mention. And the honorable mention will come, if I don't forget it, by the end of that. Because it came out. Um, see, Labyrinth and them came out. like They all were making the same type of movies, like The Never Ending Story and stuff like that. You know, and... It's um kind of crazy, but, you know, that was pretty good. So the next movie, if I don't forget my honorable mention, which I probably will, but if I do remember it, then I'll get it because I kind of just forgot it. But the next movie, we're going to go straight into that. The next movie was Flight of the Navigator. Flight of the Navigator is about an alien ship and a young boy and time travel. I give you nothing else. To give you anything else, oh yeah, it also has the very beautiful Sarah Jessica Parker from Sex and the City. To give you anything else would be to totally ruin the movie for you because it's one of those movies that you can't talk about without totally screwing it up. So you should see Flight of the Navigator. The next movie, it stars one of my idols, one of my heroes, two actually, Olympic champion Kurt Thomas, who's a star, and martial arts champion and idol hero Richard Norton. Richard Norton introduced the world to the Psy, for those who don't know. In that movie, he introduced the world to the side. Now, there may have been other sides in, like, Japanese movies and Chinese movies, but for uh, European, because I think he's, like, 
from London or France. I can't remember where he's from, but for for a European, he was one of the first people in a movie to introduce the world to the size as he threatened the American Kurt Thomas with them over the beautiful Asian woman who was half Asian and half whatever the hell this country person was supposed to be. Uh, it's got it's based on a book called The Game. I didn't read the book. I haven't found the book. If I find it or read it, I'm going to see if I like it because a lot of movies based on games. I know you see them damn lights are um pretty good, you know. So, Jim Kata. It is a very good movie. It is about gymnastics and karate and a city full of crazy people and the fathers being a secret agent because I know you see them damn lights. Anyway, so that I can finish the next three movies before somebody pisses me off that I think should be made in the movies. So this will be a short list because I talked about them earlier. Um, Voltron would be a great movie. Some jumping from the cartoon to live action because if they could do it with Transformers and G.I. Joe, they could do it with Voltron. Uh, Sailor Moon, same concept. Planet Six, same concept. Ronin Warriors, same concept. Now my honorable mention, which I totally forgot what it was, had something to do with uh, a movie like Labyrinth not Pan's Labyrinth and not the other one, but they came out like roughly about the same time, and I can't remember what the hell it was to save my life now. But that would also make a great remake with Detective we have now. And now that I was totally interrupted, and you guys have 11, 11 and a half minutes of your time that you can't get back, I want to thank you. I have another video that I'm going to be making about um, martial artists. I'm going to mention them, and then I'm going to do a rundown on them without pictures, of course. So please stay tuned to that. Thank you guys very much.